here at the old house it's all empty just left my ladder and all my milling equipment so I can take care of this the reason this was taken down let me turn you around is it was starting to develop a split all the way down here it's hollowing out in the bottom you can kind of see some shake this was here before the tree started drying out uh, that's some inclusion so probably a split tree that grew together uh, but really the reason that it was rotting out was a pretty extensive ant colony um, in the main crotch there was some squirrels living in there we'll see how much of this log is actually good uh, hopefully i can get a good chunk of the butt at least um, and then on either end of the rot here there's maybe I don't know five ish inches but these colonies tend to expand quite a bit so on this piece you can see uh and all the way out here so uh, who knows this might end up being a total bust we'll find out the log itself is hair under 10 feet long and the arrow end or the bug end it is with the cut up there 36 inches in diameter so a nice healthy size large tree and what you saw me doing here was trimming off this section unfortunately here at the major Side, the crotch and it was out at around 52 or so inches my mill will only do 42 so I've trimmed this back to just within the cut capacity of the mill and now we're ready to go got to set up my ladder for the first cut and then we'll rock and roll <laughs> First cut, I use an aluminum uh, extension ladder, just one side of it, so the other half is up over there. And um, I just eyeball this uh, to an extent, so I figure out what I want 
my plane to be. So I lined up that top board up there and kind of eyeballed the top of these two crotch pieces, the two uh, primary and the secondary lead. And then I came down and I attached this side to make sure that the ladder wasn't really contacting, uh, sort of free floating, just a little bit all the way up. What you do is you check for coplanar. So what I've got here is some string attached from this corner down to that corner and over from that corner up here to this corner and they're all on the top of this rail so what i've got here now is i've adjusted this end and they just come into contact without moving each other all that means is that there is no twist I've now got a coplanar, meaning this rail and this rail are operating on the same plane. So I will not have any twist in the board. You gotta make sure that whatever you're using is flat. And this really, uh, Jimmy Duresta said it best. If it looks flat, it is flat. But this type of shit's gonna be going through uh, processing equipment to make um, flat. Probably gonna be getting cut into smaller pieces. Right, so this doesn't have to be perfect, but that's flat, so I'm good to go. After I get my first cut started, I put in a wedge or spacer, it's inch the same as the bar, and I put in a couple of screws on either end. What I found is, as you start traveling down your first cut, this top piece is thin, kind of flimsy, and the weight of the saw head and the mill itself, or you pushing, will cause that to, to tilt. And then all the work you did to make this coat planer has gone to waste. So putting in a couple screws there holds everything in place really nice. And then you continue on with the rest of your cut. So quick discussion about what my setup is. I've got for the power head a steel MS660. It's a 90cc ounce saw. It's got tons of power, tons of torque powering a 48 inch bar, a mill from bar to post, post to post is 42 inches wide. Uh, and then the depth adjustments are here. I added this hand winch I got from Harbor Freight. This makes all of the difference in the world. What a difference, saves your back. It just makes the milling so much easier, so much smoother. So I'm just gonna winch this down to the end and then I can reset up just to start slabbing the
slab up here to our new property because uh, I just ran out of time yesterday and I'm not going to have time to finish this up today. So it's here now. I can get to it. Uh, whenever I can get to it, I've got all my milling equipment up here. So that's that. A few statistics in case you were thinking that milling your own lumber with an Alaskan mill is something that you wanted to get into. Things that I was not aware of. Uh, so one, uh, the first cut, which was pretty small, width-wise took about 10 minutes. So over a 10-foot log, that's one foot per minute. Uh, as I got wider and ultimately to the max width cut, so anything from about 36 inches to 42 inches up at the crotch end was taking me about 30 minutes, so three minutes per foot. Um, pretty slow. It's pretty slow, even with the time lapse, you know, it just doesn't move that fast. So if you're thinking you're just gonna be milling stuff up like nobody's business, uh, You'll be milling stuff, but it takes a while, uh, so just expect it. Uh, it's a lot slower than a bandsaw mill, so I'll do some comparables when I get that in. Um, but I've seen mills do cuts similar to this on a bandsaw mill in about a minute and a half. So, I mean, that's 30 times faster. <laughs> Pretty quick. Uh, the other thing is uh, bandsaw mills, they have about a, a, an eighth of an inch or less in saw kerf. Uh, it's pretty insignificant as compared to 3 8 per inch um, for the Alaskan mill. Uh, so uh, in that set of cuts there, so I got five slabs before having to call it quits, uh, I turned about one two and a half inch slab into sawdust. Uh, so I'm gonna have about another two and a half inches of this log when I finish milling it all said and done to the sawdust. When it was all said and done from the time that I actually started milling until the time that I stopped, I was four hours into it. So four hours to get five slabs done. So I had to sharpen the saw three times, uh, about every other cut. Had to sharpen the saw, I hit metal a few times. Um, that takes some time. Uh, flipping these massive slabs and moving them around just takes time and energy if you don't have equipment like a bobcat. So I've got seven more slabs thereabout that I should be able to get out of this. One more will be full length and then because of the shape of the log they'll start getting shorter uh, because I've run out of material on the crotch end and I'll just start going into short butt log lengths which is fine. The log itself turned out to be better than I was hoping for. Um, it turns out it looks like it's at least two trees that grew together. There's a pretty large uh, inclusion here and you can see all this bark and everything and ultimately that just allowed the ants and squirrels and whatever else wanted a home to get in uh, and, and kill this tree from the inside out. So hopefully I can give it a new life as some furniture, or cabinets, or whatever we end up using it for in our new house. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you got some good information out of it. Uh, if you have any more questions, please just leave them down in the comments and I'll answer them um, as best I can. Thank you.